definition, linear programming is a method of solving an optimization problem by determining the maximum and minimum value of a given object function which is linear and subjected to a set of constraints which are linear equations or linear inequalities. I said it can also be defined as a problem with an objective in linear form which involves inequality as a set of constraints. So many please. Solutions to linear programming. Solutions to linear programming. Look at two methods of solving linear programming. Look at two methods. Um, the first one is called graphical method. Second one is called simplex method. What's that is two of them? Let's call the first of it. Solution to linear programming. Let's start with the first method called graphical. graphical method please. Take down. Given an objective function z equal to ax plus y. Given an objective function z equal to ax plus y. We are x and y are linear variables. We are x and y are linear variables. And A is simply the coefficient of X. And A is simply the coefficient of X. To maximize or minimize, to maximize or minimize under inequalities, Under inequality constraint, to maximize this or minimize this, under inequality constraints, such as, such as, ax plus by less than or equal to c, x plus y less than or equal to d, x greater than or equal to zero and y greater than or equal to zero. Other constraints such as this. Please note that in linear programming, we call this constraints. We call this constraints. This. So this is called an objective function. This is the objective function constraint. Chris, Chris, be like the two. There was a point you guys there. That was the two. Like, the class that we did, okay. Alright. So this is called, this is called the objective function. This is called your constraint. In constraint, we have what's called the um, major and minor constraint. These two are called major constraint. No, please. These are called major constraints. Alright? The one, the, the, the one that involves the two variables, either adding or subtracting, are called the major constraints. Why these ones here yeah, are called minor constraints. I'll explain why this is greater than or equal to. I explain why this is less than or equal to um, as you proceed. But just that this is a this are called um, constraints. So I said to maximize or minimize the objective function this under these constraints, do the following. Think of it. Do the following. Number one. Do the following, number one. Change the inequality sign to, the, to equal to, number one. Change the inequality sign to equal to, that's the first task. 
if I'm to solve via graphical method, what's first to do? Number one, change the inequality sign to equal to. That's, that's, that's the first task. Number two, assume each assume each variable to be zero. Assume each variable to be zero. And find the corresponding value of the other variable. And find the corresponding value of the other variable for the major constraints. For the major constraints. That's number two. Number three, get the values of these coordinates. Number three, I'm giving you steps now. Number three, get the values of these coordinates. That's number three. Number four, define the feasible region. Please, this, please. Define the, this way. Feasible region in bracket, feasible region in bracket, which is usually from the origin upwards, which is usually from the origin upwards, to the nearest corners from the origin upwards to the nearest corners and shade this region and shade this region and shade this region number what number five number five get the coordinates of this boundary number five get the coordinates of this boundary Get the coordinates of these boundaries in brackets, usually three. Get the coordinates of these boundaries in brackets, usually three and above. Uh, sometimes above, basically it's three. Get the coordinates of these boundaries, usually three. And that's what we need a graph sheet. It's with the graph sheet that will pick out the three coordinates. But I'll keep it pending there. File number six. Step six, finally. Fix these coordinates. Fix these coordinates into the objective function. Fix these coordinates into the objective function. Comma. The one with the highest value. The one with the highest value from the objective function number 6 again I said fix these coordinates into the objective function comma the one with the highest value from the objective function gives the maximum value okay gives the maximum please the one with the highest value from the objective function gives the maximum while the one with the least value while the one with the least value from the objective function gives the minimum gives the minimum all right so let me keep this step with you let's solve example please example sample problem in a particular bakery, two types of cake, X and Y, are made by using two types of materials, P and Q. The quantity of materials used for each bit of cake, comma, the total quantity available of each type of material 
and the profit of each cake in Naira as shown in the table below, that's this. A says, assuming the bakery makes x unit of x and y units of y, write down the four inequalities connecting x and y. So look up this. Look up. Write down the four inequalities connecting x and y. So look up this. Look up this. Now, this is what, this is not this. This is what your inequality looks like. Look up it. So, here's what you do. Uh, we said in in um, in a programming, there's something called an objective function. Others are called the what constraints. I mean, major constraints are one there, minor constraints. For this, what do you do? Look at this. Your first task is this: to get your objective function. To get objective function, look out for your profit. Look out for your profit. If I come to profit here, yeah, perhaps uh, if I call profit either z or p. So my, my, my first um, task is this, get the um, objective function, which is your profit. The profit here, P, is equal to, in terms of X and Y, profit is 2 of X and then 3 of Y. So P is equal to 2X plus 3Y. This is what is called the objective function. That's the first task. Next up, get out your constraint. Your constraint will be in inequality form. Um, let's start with this one here. Please, this, this one is profitable. Let's start with P. Sorry? Uh, let's change the letter. Yes. No, no, P here makes profit. Okay, fine. Let's just see. It says so. Uh, no problems. Alright, for P, we have 3 of X and then 4 of Y. So it becomes, my first um, inequality becomes 3X plus 4Y. That's 3 of x plus 4y. Now look at this. If you look at p, type p, we said quantity available is what there? 18. Now listen, listen. Get this idea. If for p, I have 18 of p available, no matter how I want to mix the two variables, I cannot exceed the number of available materials. Alright? Um, let's double check this. Let's, let's put it this way here. Let's go this way. Um, I have 30 naira. Look at I have 30 naira. Okay, 300. I have 300 naira. For that 300 naira here, I want to start selling gin and clothes. My tax is this. I was given 300 naira here to start up the business. And my, 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 my um, thought is this. How do I spend that 300 naira? How many shirts should I buy? And how many trousers should I buy in order to maximize profit? With 300 naira, then do I buy more of shirts than trousers or more of trousers than shirts? That's the whole idea about inner programming. And of course, whether I choose to buy more of shirts than trousers or, or more of trousers than shirts, one thing is constant. You can't spend more than what there, 300 naira that's given. In the same case, yeah. If I have P there, the quantity of P given is 18. So if I'm having 3x plus 4y, I can spend this one here more than 18. So it becomes what there? It has to be what? Less than or what there? Equal to 18. Please understand why it's less than. Because if this man here becomes, let's assume, let's assume this one becomes greater than or equal to. With greater than 18, it means I am spending more than the available one there quantity which is not possible so in other words because what there less than please understand why it's less than because you can't spend more than the quantity available because less than or equal to 18 so that's my first inequality the same thing happens here for q 2x plus 3y should be less than this you can't spend more than the available quantity so because 2x plus 5y is less than or equal to 19. That becomes my second um, inequality. For the third one, my third and fourth inequality, look at it, is always this. It's always x being greater than or equal to 0 and y being greater than or equal to 0. Why is this so? Now, here's the idea. Using this example, right? The idea is this. Um, let's say I want to get, let's say x represents the shirt. 
and one event shows up. Um, I have 300. I want to buy either shirts and trousers under my $300 budget. At worst case, look at At worst case scenarios, I can choose to buy only shirts and ignore trousers. At worst case scenario, I can choose to buy only trousers and ignore shirts. So that's why this, what is telling you this, that for this particular expiring year, at worst, at worst case scenario, it has to be equal to zero. By equal to zero, let me see this, in, this one for illustration. By being equal to zero, it means I am totally ignoring, let's say X is my shirt and Y is chosen. If I say X equal to zero, that means I'm not even buying any one there, shirts, I'm buying only chosen. In this case now, observe that I cannot have S be less than or equal to zero. It makes no sense mathematically. It makes no sense mathematically. So please, for this, it has to be greater than or equal to. We have this object. So when they say get the four functions, it's four of these things. What the people are there is? Okay, so hang on. Are we know the impacts? Alright, so please, they say find inequalities. Look up. The inequalities are not this first one here. The inequalities is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's all. Big part says find out how many um, of these have to be done. So look at me. For this, we we'll start with this. Using, for this, we are using Gamco method. We are using Gamco method. So look up, step one, change this to what there? Equal to what? Zero. Sorry, equal to 18. So I have equal to 18. That's the first step. Change inequality to what there? Equal to. What's the next step there? As you can very easily do. Alright. And find corresponding value. Look up here. What do I do next? Assume x, you say let x be equal to zero, find the one here. For this now have this, I'll have that three times x, zero, plus four y is equal to 18. Here is zero. So I'm having four y is equal to 18. Where y is equal to 18 over four. Please give me back one now. Give me this much possible. Sorry? 4.5, 4.5. Therefore, the coordinate is, look at it, look at it. For this one, is 0 and 4.5. Please. Change inequality to be equal to, 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 to equal to, and jump x to 0, find y. When you're done, do the reverse. Therefore, assume y to be 0, find x. So the same thing, they will say, let y be equal to 0. Let's get x. If y is 0, put this condition into this equation. I will have that 3x plus 4 times y. y is 0 is equal to 18. So find x here. This gives you 3x is equal to, of course, this is about 3 times, 4 times 0 is um, 0 is about 
is equal to 18. Divide here by 3. Divide here by 3. This cancels this. So x is equal to, what do you get here? 6. So for this one here, what's the coordinate? Zero. X is 6. Why is one there? Zero. I've got this one. That's it. So change the equality to equal to, put x and 0, find y, put y and 0, find x, you get this and this. So I have, let um, me show you the numbers, call this 1, oh, I haven't had one or 2 here. Uh, okay, so I have this coordinate, I have this. I'm done with the first inequality. Pick up second inequality, repeat the same process. So for or from, from 2, I have 2x plus 5y, change this to what there, equal to what? 19. Please, change inequality to equal to, so equal to 19. What's the tax here? Put x as 0, find y, put y as 0, find x. So let x be equal to 0. If x is 0, then what do you get? 2 times 0 plus 5y is equal to 19. This minus of, I have 5y equal to 19. Now let's go one right here. What's y here? Y is equal to 19 over 5. Give me a value. 3 points. 3 point 8. So therefore, give me coordinates for this. What do you have? X is 0, Y is what? 3.8. One final one. One final one. Let Y now be equal to 0. Put this condition into this equation here. I will now have that 2X, that's 2 times X, plus 5Y, 5 into Y. Y is 0 now. So 5 times 0 is equal to 19. This one is up, yeah? So I have 2X is equal to 19. So X is equal to 19 over 2. That equals 8. For this one here, yeah, what's the coordinates? I have... Please, 9 over 2 I have on there. Please, 9 over 5. So I now have this as 9.5 and what there? 0. So therefore, therefore, the coordinates, the coordinates are number 1. My first coordinate is, uh, what is it? this one here. Which is what there? 0 and what? 4.5. My second coordinate is this one here, which is 6 and 0. So I have 6 and 0. My third coordinate is this one here, which is 0 and 3.8. My fourth coordinate is this one here, which is 9.5 and 0. So I have these four coordinates please. With these four coordinates here, I will now plot the graph. I will now plot the graph please. So from my coordinates, from my four coordinates that I got, my next task is using my graph, pick out these four points. For the first one here, it says at x equal to zero, y is 4.5. This means the, the, the midpoint between 4 and 5. At x equal to 0, that's here. Y is 4.5. This is 4. This is 5. 4.5 should be somewhere here. So I'm having this point here. So x equal to 0, y is 4.5. This point here. I've got this coordinate. Next up, at y equal to 0, x is 6. So for this one here, x is 6, y is 0. Come to x axis. This is the point here. x is 6, y is 0. This point here. So get out these two. Don't forget, these two were from my first. Um, for my first one there, equation. Yes. So get this point here, which is this. X is 0, Y is 4.5. Y is 0, X is 6 here. 
then draw a straight line to join these two. So I'll look for a way, use your long base, draw a straight line, join these two. Uh, let me see. Boundaries 
of this top gap. So look up, please. Listen, listen. This is feasible job. Listen. My feasible job becomes this. From, from origin, I'll go upwards to this point. Stop at where you have your boundary. In fact, for this one here, my boundary becomes this. From the origin, it goes up like this. Stops here. So here's my first boundary. This point. From here, it goes this way. Stops here, this intersection. From here now, goes down this way. Stops at this point and then comes back to this. So this becomes a physical region. Here, 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 this. This on what they Please understand the way we get this good region mix, right? From the boundary to the coordinates, from the boundary to the coordinates of the graph, please look at this picture. So you don't exceed this thing here, that's the idea. What's the next step there? We said check the next step there. Get the coordinates of the boundary. Abby, check. Get the coordinates of the boundary. Now listen, listen, listen. I said usually three. Uh, listen, listen. At the very minimum, listen. At the very minimum, the coordinates of the boundary is four, not three. Why I said three there was because one is constant. What's the constant? Your origin. Look at this. These are the bounds of the coordinates. This point here. Yeah? Let's call this point A. This point here. Yeah? Let's call this point B. This particular point here. Yeah? Let's call this point C. This point here. Yeah? Call this point D. Your next task. Get the coordinates of this point from your graph. Obviously, A is my origin. So for A there. Yeah? What point for A there? Yeah? Zero and what? Zero. Origin. That's this point here. X is 0, Y is 0. Next of B, I have B here. Get the coordinates of this point. This B is set that to chop there. This one here, I 0 and what? 3.8. Have it? Yes. So here is 3.8 and 0. C, please. This is point solving, so use your graph. Trace out C. Trace out C now and here. For x, what's your value? For y, what's your value? Use your graph. Two for x what? X is two. So so x is four. Does somebody got two? X is two. Y is one. So your path to is trace this. Uh, my try. Don't forget to one try. So y is six, three, five. We'll confirm this using simplex. So that becomes uh, 3, yeah? So y is 3, so x is 2. We um, trace this down. So with a graph, your next x as 2. This one is a board drawing. With graph, the graph is as x2 and y3. So that's c. Get out d. For d, this one here, what's the coordinate? This is 0 and 6, or 6 and 0. Don't mistake them. This is 6 and 0. x is 6. So I'm having 6 and 7. With this. This what? So B is 7 and 3.8. C, from your graph work, X is 2 from your graph, Y is 3. So it becomes 2 and 3. For D, X is 6, Y is 0. So I have 6 and 0 as coordinates. So you have Now listen. Listen. 
Please say. Check your past question. We'll do one now. In your past, you said you sketch this stuff. That means you do, you do that graph there using a pen on your question paper. That's what you do there. And I said, while that one is okay, the danger there is that you may not get these values correctly. That's the problem. Because C there was, as you, as you check there, C was um, somewhere um, on, the, on the graph sheet there. If you don't have a graph sheet, how do you know this is two and three? How, how would you know? It's just be a guess. So please get a good graph. So my, my advice would be this. Get a graph, plot in the graph, if possible, attach to it. That's like the best for you to do. If not, you don't get the value. When we get this coordinate, what's next? One last step. One last step. Recall the, what's it called? Um, or the fifth function. P was equal to what? So Z. So Z is equal to plus three Y. All right. Your next task is to put in each of these coordinates into this one here. Yeah. The one with the highest value is what will maximize the profit. The one with the least value is what will minimize the profit. So start with this for A. For A, I have 0, 0. It means that x is 0, y is 0. So I will have that z is equal to 2 times x, 0, plus 3 times y, 0. This will give you what there? 0. So I have z equal to 0. Take the second one for B. B is 0 and 3.8. Get the value of Z. Z will be equal to 2 times X. 2 times X here is 0 plus 3 times Y. Y here is 3.8. Let's give you what there? 11.4. Eleven point four naira. You have this. Think for C. Think for C. For C, C is two three. Two three. Uh, how do you get that? We we'll have that Z is equal to two times x. X is two plus three times y. Y is three. So two times x two. Plus 3 times 1, 3. This is equal to 4 plus 9. That's equal to 13. Don't forget, they said it is in Naira. So put up, put up 13 Naira, yeah? One last one, D. For D, D here is uh, 6, 0. That means Z will be equal to 2 times X. X here is 6. Plus 3 times y, y here is 0. That's equal to 2 times 6, 12. Plus 3 times 0, 0. This is equal to 12 naira. Please check the question. Did they say maximize or minimize? Which of them? Alright, so therefore, therefore, the maximum value, please put this stuff in white when you're done. Therefore, the maximum, not just maximum, don't forget, we said Z meant what there? Profit, check. Was called the profit function. Therefore, the maximum profit is how much there? 13 naira, which is got by, got by producing, producing, so we got 13 from producing two units of x and three units of y. All right, from producing two units of x and three units of y. So that's your answer. The maximum is 13. Got by producing two of x and three of y. If they are set, find the minimum function, the minimum would have been what there? Eh? Zero naira by using what there? Zero x and zero y. That's that's it. That's, that's how you solve this question. Yes, question. So somebody is asking, somebody is saying, 
how do you link this one here to the materials used? If you look at the question, it says two types of cakes are made. What are what there? X and Y. Leave out those grammars there. Those grammars are going to help you produce your equations. So bear in mind that with this particular break, we make two types of cakes. That's X and Y. Now they are saying a break can make two types of cake, X and Y. So how many quantities of X should it produce to make maximum profit? And how many quantities of Y should it produce to make maximum profit under the available given quantity there? So from our survey now, it means that if this company or if this bakery wants to make a maximum profit, then it should produce what there? Two use of what? Um, is it bread? You can say bakery. Alright, so the picture one man. <laughs> so it means that the bakery should be producing what there? Two units of X and what there? Three units of what there? Y. If the bakery produces two units of X and three of Y, what will now be the profit? That's the question. That's like what there? Let's see.